And as you can see, the 23-year-old De La Hoya has a three-inch height advantage and a six-and-a-half-inch reach advantage over the 33-year-old Julio Cesar Chavez. They both weighed in one pound under the 140-pound limit. Larry? Jim, for years, Chavez hasn't had the inclination or the inspiration to get into the kind of supreme condition he appears to be for De La Hoya. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Julio Cesar Chavez Oscar De La Hoya fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the belt in the 12th and final round only. Jim. All right, Harold. And as the challenger tonight for Julio Cesar Chavez's 140-pound championship, Oscar De La Hoya will enter the ring first. For his victories over John John Molina, Rafael Uelas, Gennaro Hernandez, and Jesse James Leja, De La Hoya was everyone's choice as Fighter of the Year in calendar 1995. You know, you prepare for a lot of fights, but when you're going against those legends, strange things happen. You slip in the dressing room, all kind of things can happen. And you get into this ring this time, walking up those steps, and it's awful shaky. What about walking out through this enormously pro Chavez crowd? Could that have an effect on young De La Hoya? It's not so much the crowd as the fighter he's going into the ring with. I went up against Muhammad Ali like that, and I thought, I'm well prepared. Now all of a sudden you realize this is the guy I was going on my way to school, and they were arguing about it. He was the champ of the world, and shaky things start happening to you. You start doing awful and having strange thoughts. If you can only be yourself. Part of the question tonight, can Oscar De La Hoya be himself amid these circumstances? De La Hoya with 21 professional fights since having won the Olympic gold medal in Barcelona in 1992. 19 knockouts. Knockouts in each of his last four appearances. And amazingly enough, he enters the biggest fight of his professional career with a newly named head trainer, Jesus Ribeiro. They call him the professor. It's an unusual move for the young fighter, Larry Merchant. Some might question it, having a new voice in your corner, but he seems to be comfortable with it. Rivera's an interesting character, a sort of customado philosopher, in the, as well as a fight trainer. Some Mike Katz of the Daily News said he's been teaching Willie Pep and Willie Shakespeare to De La Hoya. <laughs> In a moment, the music will begin for Chavez, and then it will be drowned out by the crowd. sources in the sport quarrel with Chavez's argument that he has had 99 fights and this will be the 100th. 
It is most fun to go along with Julio's view of things and to call this the 100th fight of his career. Who knows? Maybe it's even true. So the record that we cite for Julio Cesar Chavez, 97 wins, the loss to Frankie Randall, the draw with Pernell Whitaker, 79 knockouts. <laughs> Let's take it up to Michael Buffer for pre-fight introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the Nellis Air Force Base Honor Guard in attendance, displaying the colors, please rise for the national anthems. First of all, the Mexican national anthem to be performed by Mr. Pedro Fernandez. Mexicanos al grito de guerra el acero apresta y el bridón y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón ciña o oh patria tus sienes de oliva de la paz del arcángel divino que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió mas si osare un extraño enemigo profanar con su planta tu suelo pienso patria querida que el cielo un soldado en cada hijo te dio un soldado en cada hijo te dio mexicanos al grito de guerra el acero apresta y el bridón y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón ¡Viva México! And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem of the United States of America to be performed by Mr. John Sakata. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets reclaimed the bombs bursting in air. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Top Rank Incorporated and Don King Productions in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you and Caesar's Palace present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World.
This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Dr. James Nave. Commissioners, Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Luther Mack, and Crispin Rivera. Executive Director, Mark Ratner. Physicians in attendance at ringside, Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. James Wishgame, Dr. Al Capanna, and Dr. Robert Voy. Your timekeepers at the bell are James Cavan and Mike Lachella. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. President at ringside, Jose Suleiman. Supervisor in attendance for the WBC, Eduardo Lamanzon. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Anik Hamkamkam, Larry O'Connell, and Daniel Van Deville. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace of Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the multicolored trunks and weighing in at 139 pounds, a young man who captured Olympic gold in 1992 and now has a perfect professional record of 21 victories without a loss, 19 knockouts, and he has won three world title belts. Tonight, he goes for world title number four. Ladies and gentlemen, from East Los Angeles, California, presenting the challenger, three-time world champion and reigning WBO lightweight champion of the world, the gold and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner also weighing in at exactly 139 pounds wearing white trimmed with blue and red he brings a professional record into the ring of 97 victories, 79 knockouts with only one loss and one draw. One of the finest in the history of boxing. In that record, he has won five world title bouts and is considered by many as one of the greatest fighters of the last half century. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros con Culiacán, Mexico, presenting the five-time world champion and reigning WBC super lightweight champion of the world Julio Cesar Chavez Oscar Okay, Julio, Oscar, that you need that red on the Camerino. I gave you the fights in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Que una pelea limpia. Desa la mano. Dios lo bendiga los dos. Jim, this is youth, talent, ambition against experience, will, and pride. A fight that may be as simple as the power and speed of youth or as complicated as the will of a great warrior. Both fighters sparred upwards of 300 rounds at altitude in preparation for this. De La Hoya says he's in the best shape of his life. Chavez says he's in the best shape since March 17, 1990, his dramatic comeback win over Meldrick Taylor. First punch of the fight is a De La Hoya jab. Start for De La Hoya, who seems anxious to see what Chavez wants to do. 
If Oscar sticks with the jab, George, the challenge for Julio will be to get inside it somehow. That's right. Not only should Oscar establish the dominancy of his jab, but do not allow Chavez to hit him with one jab. In other not words, only, take not, away Chavez's jab at the same time that he's establishing his own. That's right. Don't allow him to think that he Already can Already there is a all. cut There's alongside a the left eye of Chavez. It looks like a scrape. Not dangerous, but it's very early in the fight for blood to be showing. It came from the one right cross that Delahoy landed, and now more blood as Delahoy again lands with the right. And Chavez is already starting to flow above the left eye. And Delahoy is landing that right hand, George. This is a veteran. He didn't come here tonight to lose the fight in one round. Oscar, stick the plans. If the jab opened up the cut, stick with the jab. It may be a more dangerous cut than I first thought. Chavez was cut over the same eye in the first round of his tough decision victory over David Kamau. Oh, 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 oh. And now oh, Joe Cortez oh. stops because he wants a doctor to take a look at the cut. Round one. And this blood started flowing less than a minute into the fight. That cut was open in training. You can believe that. Hard to imagine that one right hand could have done that much damage, but it came after De La Hoya landed his first right cross. Yeah, it was a big cover-up. And Chavez suddenly has more purpose. I think he realizes that this fight could be stopped sooner or later by cuts. He, he's going to try to engage De La Hoya right here. That, of course, has never happened to Julio Cesar Chavez in 99 previous recorded bouts. No, he did have a cut, if you recall, in his second fight with Frankie Randall, Jim. Yes, but you're suggesting the fight could be stopped, Larry, and that fight was stopped because of an unintentional headbutt cut. This one was caused by a punch. You're right. for Oscar De La Hoya. There's already desperation in Chavez. As we go to two Spanish-speaking corners tonight, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Are you okay, Julio? Stay calm. The cut, the cut is pretty deep. We're going to have to play by ear. I think that cut is pretty bad. It's not bleeding now. Just give me the towel. De La Hoya threw 52 punches by punch stat count in round one. Chavez only 18. How does the cut change Julio's strategy, George? Well, he didn't intend to be so aggressive this early. Chavez did not. Now he's having to put on some aggression to keep Oscar at bay. And this just isn't the kind of strategy he wanted. He wanted to play as cool for the first three or four rounds. And for De La Hoya, just stick with the jab and the plan, right? That's right. De La Hoya starts trying to open up this cut with too many right hands. The fight goes into the fourth round. It's Chavez gets renewed strength and courage, and he can change everything. Keep your cool, keep jabbing. De La Hoya is still picking his shots here in the first minute of round number two. So far, the blood not flowing again on Chavez's left eye. It has started again, Jim. Okay. It has indeed. And De La Hoya lands another right hand, and now the blood really begins to flow. Left hook, best punch of the bout so far for Chavez. Chavez stepped in there. 
Delahoy is starting to bring his chin down just a little lower. This works for Chavez because he's been missing with that left hook because of the height differential. Get your chin down and throw that hook. It's a different thing. Delahoy lands two him. short left hooks in there. Chavez came back with a counter right. Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. But the crowd is more subdued at this moment than we might have expected. Certainly the overwhelming majority here rooting for Chavez and many of them silenced by the visible flow of blood. Ho, ho, ho! Let's go. Delahoy has allowed uh, Chavez to relax a little bit. He shouldn't have allowed him that relaxation because he started to think and realize, hey, I am the master of this ring. I've been around a long time. You gotta stay on and do something at all times. Delahoya has to. Yet in two rounds so far, George, Chavez has been unable to engage, get close to Delahoya, and do any kind of damage. But that's the way he fights. He's never won the fights in one or two rounds. He gets closer and closer, and he starts to take over. Now, if he can just remember that, then don't do nothing strange. We're going back to round one to show you the punches that opened the cut on the left eye of Chavez. And that was a left jab to the left eye of Chavez. Normally you would expect a right hand to open the cut there, but this was a crisp left jab to the eye. Entirely correct, and the right hand that I have talked Fair about enough. came after that, so uh, it landed time. and caused the cut even earlier than might have first appeared to be the case. Statistically, through the first couple of rounds, De La Hoya throwing more than twice as many punches as Chavez. And you can see that Harold Letterman has given the first two rounds to the 23-year-old challenger. Oscar De La Hoya is starting to land jabs to the stomach. That's very important if you're fighting a puncher to take his power away from him in case the fight goes longer than five or six rounds. But it's also going to bring his chin down into Chavez's punching range, isn't it? No, De La Hoya is landing the left jab to the body, which means Chavez's power will start to diminish as the fight goes on. De La Hoya is starting to lean down a little too much, and that's dangerous for him. One thing Chavez has not done, he has always wor worn down his opponents, George, by punching to the body. I don't believe in two oh, rounds right, plus that he's landed a body we're punch yet. Let's go. That's because of that early cut. Sometimes you get a little hesitant. Chavez has got to realize it's going to happen close. It's not going to, anything is going to happen from the outside. You got to get close. They stay out for the time being in De La Hoya's punching range. And he continues to control Chavez with the jab and with body punches. And Chavez going backwards more than we've ordinarily seen him go backwards. For good reasons. Oscar De La Hoya has a jab like an ordinary right hand by the average fighter. That jab hurts you. It makes you want to stay away. Hard left hand to the body by De La Hoya as Chavez came in close. Then De La Hoya hey, backs up to try come to find hey, punching hey, range again. Hey, 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 hold. Hey, come on, give me a clean round. Give me a clean round, yeah? Let's go. Let's go. That's an old Willie right. Pep move there. Hard counter hey, left hey, inside hey. there by De La Hoya as Chavez was stepping in. Oscar lands the uppercut and a right hand. Chavez was able to get a little closer that time. Although he's missing from outside, he was able to get a little closer. He 
he's going to have to take a lot of leather to get in close, George, unless he can find a better formula. And he should have uh, included that on the cost of the house when he took this bout. You're going to have to take some and give some, too. Take a lot and give some. De La Hoya getting just a little bit more aggressive now as the clock winds down in the third. for the moment seems without a clear plan as to how to get inside of De La Hoya's jam. Good left hook by Chavez. It was right on top of the brow. But so far, Chavez has looked his age. Sit down. Sit down. Say, Fred, let you take that card. Let you take that card. Let me open. Let me open his card. Let me see it. Let me open his card. You have to use the left hand. Use your right hand also. He's <laughs> Okay. Okay, Papa, let me see. Yeah, no problem. It's no problem. No problem. Yeah. Just keep doing exactly the same thing you were doing when you first, when you first started. Round four begins. Oscar De La Hoya to this moment throwing 30 jabs per round. Seems to believe he has no more time to waste. And he's starting to look like he's 23 years old. On, Whenever go. he throws more than three punches, he looks young. Chavez getting in a left hook in close. And he brings the crowd out of their seats as he tries to mount the attack in the first minute of round four. And in that exchange, Jim, De La Hoya landed a nice left hand on the jaw. It didn't phase Chavez. Well, we know what a great chin the Warrior has. Julio Cesar Chavez down only once in 99 previous bouts. And that was from an accumulation of punishment against Frankie Randall. Oscar's a good fighter, but he hasn't concentrated on winning a fight on points in years. This could be a deficit for him because he's been getting knockouts, looking for knockouts. Now you're in a fight where you may have to build up some points in case you don't get this knockout. He did score a tough decision victory over John John Molina early in 1995. When others say Oscar hasn't been pressured or roughed up in the ring, his supporters point to that fight and say, oh, yes, he has. And we may have some judges tonight who may like the aggression of uh, Cesar Chavez. Yeah, but he's not being the aggressor. Hard left hook by Chavez. That is the third good left hook that Chavez has landed. All to the chin. All because Oscar De La Hoya stands and wait for him to do something if he's not jabbing. You can't stand and wait. You got to do something. But Chavez, at the same time that he's mounting his best attack of the fight, continues to paw at his left eye, trying to keep the blood from hampering his vision. De La Hoya much more tentative now here in round four, having tasted some of Chavez's power. Good short left hook by De La Hoya. And he comes back with a right hand. And the blood bothering Julio as De La Hoya lands a vicious left hook. Bella Hoya is starting to be himself now. Forget about all of that strategy and the new guy in your corner. Get out there and be yourself. Brutal left hook to the body by De La Hoya. Chavez's will seeming to be sapped now, as in the last minute of round four, it's been all Oscar De La Hoya. Now he's... Chavez, De La Hoya goes back to the stomach, which is ideal for a youngster. I can't believe it. And Cortez takes Chavez to flip Pomansky. Get in the corner. Get in the corner. That's it. He's calling the fight. That's it. The fight That's it. is over.
King George, do they call him the Golden Boy? The combination of a skillful performance, maybe just a little bit of good fortune, Chavez's bloody mask at the end, simply too grotesque for Homansky to allow the fight to continue. But guys, the old guy was never in this fight because the young guy didn't let him get in there. He maintained his poise, he used his own strengths. This kid is like a debutante with a knife in her purse. He looks like, he looks like the golden boy, but he's got some iron and lead in those gloves. And if anyone was looking for the answer in round four, when Chavez mounted his fiercest attack of the fight, De La Hoya starts him with a left hook, turned matters around, and dominated the last minute before the stoppage. It reminded me of Clint Eastwood in The Unforgiven. He said, I'm, 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 well, I've always been lucky at killing people. <laughs> De La Hoya seems to be a little lucky at doing this stuff. When you're both good and lucky, that's a heck of a tough combination to beat. Well, let's throw away luck. He was good. George, he was terrific tonight. He put the right hand with the jab and then brought the left hook. And that, in the end, was the difference. Let's take a look at this flurry toward the end of the bout. Jab, right cross, left hook, left hook again, right cross across the top of the head, left hook, left hook again, a short right. Not all of those punches landing flush, but all of them stopping Chavez from being able to mount any kind of attack. And that's what Oscar De La Hoya, my only worry was for him, that he would not be himself and do what he normally does best. In the end, he simply smothered Chavez with speed and power. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. Dr. Flip Homansky has ruled that the former champion Julio Cesar Chavez was unable to continue because of severe lacerations to the eyes. The winner by technical knockout, winning his fourth world title belt and new WBC super lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Well, as a useful piece of trivia, no longer meaningful here, it's worth noting that Oscar De La Hoya won all three rounds on all three judges' cards to start the fight, so there was no funny scoring uh, at that early stage of the bout, and what a performance in round four, George. It's strange because Chavez was doing the best he could, and ordinarily against anyone else, that best would have been good enough, but this guy is a little better than best. De La Hoya, phenomenon, that's what he is. Let's see how Oscar feels about it. Larry Merchant's with him in the ring. Oscar, congratulations to the fight first. How did the cut eye change the fight in your judgment? Well, in my judgment, Julio Cesar Chavez had something more to worry about in his corner. We knew if a cut, a broken nose, or if he was hurt, that would change all that during the fight. So that's what we try to accomplish early on in the rounds. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by what you just said, that you knew if something like that happened, he would have a problem? Well, Julio Cesar Chavez, once they attack him, once he knows that he can back up a fighter, he's in trouble, he's lost. And what we try to do, we, we, that's, that's our, that was our game plan, our, men, our mental game plan, to have him think up in his corner. Because when he's thinking, wow, this guy throws hard jabs, this guy throws left hooks, and then the cut occurs, he has something else to worry about. Instead of, uh, instead of his boxing, boxing tactics, he has a cut to worry about. So you weren't surprised after that cut that he didn't seem to be the relentless aggressor that he was at his best? Well, Julio Cesar Chavez was still the aggressor. He was still putting pressure. He's a true warrior, he's a true champion. But the blood, the cuts, the broken nose was affecting him. You say the broken nose. You, do you know that he, you broke his nose as well? It felt on my left hook as if I hit a good, solid left hook, and the blood just started gushing out like Janelle Hernandez's nose the way I did to his. All right, we're going to take a look at a replay of the punches that caused the cut. Describe what you see. Well, right here, I was throwing the jabs. I think that right, that straight jab, that's when the, cut, the blood started coming down. That jab right there, stiff, straight jab that we were working on. What did it feel like to see him in so much trouble, to see the blood gushing from his eye, 
this legend and the chances getting larger and larger that you were going to take him? Well, I was very surprised because uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, he's known to get cut. He's known to have a, a very tender nose, but I really didn't think that my stiff jab was going to... Uh, previously. I, I really didn't want to postpone the fight because of it. You, you guys noticed it was just a minor punch and uh, it just opened the cut. But really that, uh, that Oscar de la Hoya has a big punch really doesn't. He really does. I didn't even feel his punches. I just couldn't see because of the blood. Voy a volver, voy a ganar dos peleas y, y voy a estar ya en buena, en buena con mis cejas. But I, I will, I'm going to come back, I'm going to fight another two more fights yo and then I'm going to give a rematch. Yo sabía que esto podía pasar muy rápidamente. I just know this could happen very, very fast. Pero ya, pero eran tres meses de preparación, era mucha pérdida de dinero. It was uh, three, three months of preparation for this and I didn't want to uh, cancel because right, of the amount of cut. George Foreman speculated when that happened that he thought that there might have been something wrong from training. When... Is, is that what you're saying, and when did it happen? Uh, George Foreman dijo que esa cortada pudo haber sido que te había pasado anteriormente. No puedes decir yeah. qué fue lo que pasó. Yeah, era un entrenamiento. Uh, during training. How, a, how long before the fight and exactly what happened? ¿Cuántos días antes de la pelea eso te pasó y, y cómo fue que pasó? I, I don't know, no, no recuerdo. Uh, he, he doesn't remember. Pero fueron pocos días. It was a, just a few, very few days. And after that, were you, did you... Back to school and he's picking up all the old tricks. Put your hand on the shoulder before he gets started. That means he has to start all over again. Experts like George telling us in the last couple days that Oscar probably picked that technique up by looking at films of Sandy Sadler against Willie Pep, low those many years ago. Yeah, the, all of those secrets are right there in those tapes. If only the young fighters would study them. Well, and the new head trainer, Jesus Rivero, has Oscar looking at a lot of the old tapes, much as Tyson has done throughout his career, and there you see part of the result. Let's talk about something else that happened. glove and places it against Chavez's right shoulder. Now, as we look at instances of that on tape, tell us what he accomplished with it. Well, it's the old rule of thumb if you're going to be a defensive fighter. You stop the punch. If you don't stop it, you block it. If you can't stop, block, you move away from it. De La Hoya has gone back to school and he's picking up all the old tricks. Put your hand on the shoulder before he gets started. That means he has to start all over again. Experts like George telling us in the last couple days that Oscar probably picked that technique up by looking at films of Sandy Sadler against Willie Pep, low those many years ago. Yeah, the, all of those secrets are right there in those tapes. If only the young fighters would study them. Well, and the new head trainer, Jesus Rivero, has Oscar looking at a lot of the old tapes, much as Tyson has done throughout his career. Recently, in, in the f fight with Arturo Gatti, he had... Very similar cut, but he was young. He was told he had to stop the fight in that round, and he went out and knocked out Tim Littles. And then you recall recently in, in the f fight with Arturo Gatti, he had these terrible eyes. The fight came very close to being stopped, yet he, he kept on the attack and finally stopped his opponent, Wilson Rodriguez. That's what a young fighter does, a young fighter who wants what somebody else has, instead of an older fighter defending what he has. And there, Julio Cesar Chavez, as you saw in round four, allowing De La Hoya to continue to control the pace and the tone of the fight, rather than, as you say, going to war against him. But one thing has to be said, those other fighters weren't...